Okay, welcome back everyone. Now I'm aware that we have had some people uh, joining the group late and uh, I'm just going to give this will be the last chance to catch up um, after this. I'm afraid anybody coming in after this point will not be able to participate in this particular workshop. So uh, those of you who have not yet uh, answered the step one question, I'm going to ask it to you again and I'm going to ask you the step two question and you can answer them yes or no in the uh, WhatsApp group. So it will be um, two yeses or two no's or whatever. Here is the step one question. Do you concede to your innermost self that you are powerless over your addiction and that your life is unmanageable by you? Yes or no? Do you believe or are you even willing to believe that there is a power greater than yourself? Yes or no? That is the first and second step question. Uh, if you've said the third step prayer, then you can put today's date against steps one and two in the center column and against step three. We're now going to move on to Step to do step four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. This is item 37. Um, so referring to step three, it says item 37, this was only a beginning, though if honestly and humbly made an effect, sometimes a very great one was felt at once. Next, we launched out on a vigorous, a course of vigorous action, the first step of which is a personal house cleaning, which many of us had never attempted. Though our decision was a vital and crucial step, it could have little permanent effect, at least at once, followed by a strenuous effort to face and be rid of the things in ourselves which had been blocking us. Our liquor was but a symptom, our addictions were but a symptom. We had to get down to causes and conditions. So what is the underlying problems that are driving our addiction? And I think we've heard already, driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity. This, this, there's something, there's a peace going on inside, which is driving our addiction, which need, we need to get down to these causes and conditions. So therefore we started on a personal inventory. This was step four. Being convinced that self in various ways was what had defeated us, we considered its common manifestations. Now in the big book, it then goes on to talk about resentment, fears, and guilts, including sexual guilts. Okay. Now, You could say that's like three defects, resentment, fear, and guilt. Well, we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to be breaking this down into much more detail. Uh, and I'm going to be presenting to you a method of working the steps, which comes from the Akron Cleveland area of AA, rather than from the New York area. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, Bill W. was the primary author of the big book. Obviously, it was a collaboration between New York and Akron, but he decided, he chose to put this method of working the fourth step into the big book, even though it appears that almost none of the old timers in AA ever did this, and that he didn't do it himself. In fact, if you, in Bill's story, if we actually look for a moment at, uh, at Bill, well, Bill describes how he took the fourth step. This is item 14. Um, he, he, he refers it to being in hospital. He's in hospital um, for, he calls it the last time, treatment seemed wise for I showed signs of delirium tremens. There in the hospital, I humbly offered myself to God as I then understood him to do with me as he would. I placed myself unreservedly under his care and direction. I admitted for the first time that of myself I was nothing, that without him I was lost. Now, I guess you know what step that was. Okay, step three, 
He's, he's, he's just made, he's done his step three, okay? Now he tells us how he does his fourth step. I ruthlessly faced my sins. That's it. Half a sentence. He didn't say, I ruthlessly spent three years writing 800 pages of resentments. He doesn't say that. He says, I ruthlessly faced my sins. That's Bill W. doing his fourth step. And the sentence goes on, and became willing to have my newfound friend take them away root and branch. Well, that's step six. So he's mentioning two steps in one sentence. And then he goes on to say, I've not had a drink since. This is a crucial moment in his recovery. He then says, my schoolmate visited me and I fully acquainted him with my problems and deficiencies. Step five, we made a list of people I had hurt or to whom I felt resentment. Step eight. Now again, how long did this take? A day? At the most. Maybe a couple of hours. I expressed my entire willingness to approach these individuals admitting my wrong. Step eight. Never was I to be critical of them. I was to write all such matters to the utmost of my ability. Step nine. I was to test my thinking with the new God consciousness within. Step 10. Common sense would thus become uncommon sense. I was to sit quietly when in doubt, asking only for direction and strength to meet my problems as he would have me. Step 11. Never was I to pray for myself except when these requests bore on my usefulness to others. Then only might I expect to receive, but that would be in great measure. My friend promised when these things were done, I would enter upon a new relationship with my creator that I would have the elements of a way of living which answered all my problems. The program is much simpler than it, than, than it, sometimes we make it very complicated, okay? And uh, I know loads of people whose, whose recovery has halted on step four because they've tried to do this method in the big book and they failed. I'm going to give you a method today which you'll be able to finish today. In, in, in five hours from now, well, in four hours from now, you, you will have done your fourth and fifth step. That's, that's what's on offer today, if you stick with it. So, this method comes, this is, comes a very good pedigree. I'll tell you the pedigree. I was shown this method by an old timer called Bill B who was taken through the 12 steps by Clarence Schneider from Cleveland Ohio who's one of the original 100 of AA who was sponsored by Dr. Bob. Clarence took thousands of people through the 12 steps using this method and it, you know he had in, himself been taken through the steps by Dr. Bob. So here's the, here's the lineage okay Dr. Bob, Clarence Schneider, Bill B, me, and you. Okay? Five generations. All right? It's not the method in the big book. I would like those of you who've done the method in the big book, which I've done too, and is excellent and everything, fantastic, put that to one side. We're not going to do that. We're going to do something completely different, which is going to look at those hundred forms that I talked about before. Those hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity. We're going to get that list down in black and white so that when we come to surrendering the exact nature of our wrongs, it'll be a comprehensive list. That's, so that's the task. Okay, so here's the first part of the process. Uh, turn to page seven, and you'll see that pages seven, eight, nine, and 10 are almost identical. Okay, it's a three-part performer, three-column performer. I'm going to identify some events from my life about which I had strong negative feelings. Feelings of anger, sadness, fear, guilt, pain, shame, possibly numb, possibly excitement, but basically uncomfortable feelings 
these are situations that about which that I was disturbed, the things that disturbed me. The first page is for the time when I was zero to five years old. Don't worry, I'm going to help you with this. The second page is about six to 12 years old. Third one, 13 to 19, and the fourth one, 20 to date. Do not concern yourself with page 11 and following. We are just concentrating on these four pages, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Four pages to write in two hours. That's the task. Half of your inventory will be before you were a teenager. This is extremely powerful, as you will see. It's very unlike what you've done before. Stick with it. Okay, so. First column, the name of the person concerned. Or an institution. So it, it could be, you know, the tax man, the government, the political party, you know, the pressure group. It could be, you know, anything. But any institution as well as a person. Or it could be a group like anonymous prostitutes or... Um, um, my, uh, my schoolmates, something like that. Uh, in the second column, we want a short, concise description of what happened. Not an essay and not a note. A sentence or two, which if you read it to another person, they will understand exactly what happened. And then in the third column, to note all of the feelings that you had at that time and now about this, okay, about this event. So here, here is one from my own inventory, zero to two, zero to five. Person, my mother, I hurt my finger and cried. She came into the room and hit me. Feelings. Anger, sadness, fear, guilt, pain, shame, numb. Okay. You understand what happened. Just for that, that simple, concise. I didn't write finger, you know, and then start to elaborate. I just read you what I'd written. Okay. That's what I want you to do. Just read what you've written when you come to your fifth step. Don't elaborate. But that means that the statement needs to be clear and concise to understand from what you've written what happened sufficiently, okay? So first column, person, what happened, feelings. And then on to the next one. Now what we're looking for is about 40 incidents altogether from your life. 10 per page, so that gives you an idea. You're going to be able to write one sentence or two in reasonably small handwriting to get 10 onto the page. Okay, that's sort of what we're looking for. Okay, about 40 incidents altogether. Now, what are these incidents? Well, they are, they are traumatic events. They're things that have happened that have caused you significant disturbance. Try to avoid making them all the same kind of event. There's a bit of a tendency for people who've done the method in the big book before to sort of borrow a whole list of resentments. That's not going to be very helpful. This is a whole life inventory. It's not a sexual inventory, so they shouldn't all be about sex. There should be some about sex, but not all about sex. They shouldn't all be resentments. They should be also events where you felt sadness or fear or guilt or shame or pain. They will certainly include the events when you were most angry, most sad, most afraid, most guilty, and most ashamed. And so by definition, this will include your darkest secret. Now, whether you choose to share that with another person in your fifth step is, a, is up to you, okay? But it needs to go on this bit of paper. So don't leave this lying around where somebody might discover it, okay? So this is about rigorous self-honesty and it is difficult work because you're dealing with negative experiences from the past, uh, but you can just keep praying and keep working and it, you'll be through it in two hours, okay? And then 
you'll be able to experience dropping the rock in your fifth step. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some special instructions about zero to five because it's difficult. Okay, most people really struggle with this. Some of us have no memories of zero to five and others have only a few. I want you to write whatever memories you have. Uh, now, to help yourself, one of the things that you can do is in the first column, you know you were alive then and you know there were certain people in your life then. So write the names of every significant person in your life in the first column. And then ask yourself the question, what's my first memory of that person? And that will help. I'll give you some, some clues. We, re we usually remember things because they were either very strong, pleasurable, or un you know, displeasurable feelings associated with them. That's why we tend to remember things. It's also one of the reasons why we have no memories, because the, the mind has the ability to sort of seal, seal memories off and just stuff them down somewhere, forget them. Um, having no memories of one's childhood is itself a bit suspicious, if I can say. You know, it's a, there's a suspicion there that maybe there's a reason why we can't remember these things. Okay, so that's what's my first memory of this person. But I can also start at the other side as well, or try starting from the other side, which is to say, what is my first memory of being angry? You know, when was I on the floor beating my fists and my, my, my heels on the floor in a complete paddy? When did that happen? What was going on? When was I most sad? When at first, when was I first, when did I first remember being sad? When I first remember crying? When do I first remember being really afraid, really guilty? When I first remember being ashamed? Can I remember numbing out, dissociating? I remember the first time I did that. Okay, so that's the, you can approach it from both ways that way. Then you can say, okay, well, what about the family photograph album? Uh, I know I was there, but I can't really remember it, but I know I was there. So that gives me some events. Maybe if these events were traumatic in some way, uh, I could imagine how I felt. So I can begin to sort of flesh it out a bit, even if I don't remember exactly what happened or how I felt. I, I know I was there. And also I can use the stories that were told about me. So for instance, you know, uh, your, 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 your parents or your relatives or whatever other people in your life will have told you about things that happened to you back then. Now, you can write about those, even if you don't remember them yourself, you can write them down, write, you know, what happened down. And then you can say, well, who was likely to be present? You can put their names in there. And what were my, like, my, my feelings, probable? what were my probable feelings? Okay. Now, this might sound a bit flaky, but it's okay. You can, if the worst comes to the worst, and you can't remember anything, you can make it up based on what you know even if you have no memories, based on what you know, you can still make it up, okay? It still works, all right? So just trust me on that. If in doubt, make it up from what you, based on what you know about your life back then. The other, the other age groups should be easier. 13 to 19, you should have lots of memories. And 20 to date, you may have to be very selective. Here, you're looking for the time that you are most angry, most sad, most afraid. Okay, so um, you're going to be, have to be selective. All right, only use those feeling words. Don't use any others. Don't add any others. Just use those ones. Okay. Now, this is not in a sense a moral inventory because we're not dealing here in right and wrong, we're dealing in feelings. Feelings aren't right or wrong, they're just feelings. You know, they just come and go, they have a life of their own. Some of them are valid and some of them are not valid, they're all real. But this is all we're looking at at this stage, we're looking at the feeling level. 
we're not looking at the defect level here. We're looking at the feeling. We'll come on to the defect level later. Uh, if you turn to page 11, there is uh, a, some columns there for defects and assets. I do not want you to write in that yet. You're going to get further instructions on that. So do not write on pages 11 and following. It's just those four pages. Just complete those four pages, about 40 items. That's what we're looking for in two hours. Okay. Now, it's, we have 10 minutes until we get to the top of the hour in India and the half hour in other parts of the world. This is 10 minutes for people to ask questions. But if you think you've heard enough, you understand what's required, you know what you've got to do, I want you just to drop off the call. Please do this in silence as far as possible. Concentrate. Do not chat on the WhatsApp group. But if, you get, if you've got a real problem and you're stuck, then sure, we want to hear from you. But please just do this in silence. Write for two hours. You know, have a break when you need to, but come back on the call in two hours and 10 minutes from now, two hours and 10 minutes from now with those four pages complete. If you, if you think you've understood, you've got enough information, just drop off the call now, please. Uh, and I'm going to now take questions from anybody who has uh, it's it's 40 items in total in toto it's not it's 10 items per page sorry thank you for that 10 items per page okay so uh i'm now ready to take any questions um we've got 10 minutes for questions if anybody's got any about this assignment please nothing else just about this assignment any questions if you no questions, drop off the call, begin your work back in one hour and eight minutes. Yes, two hours to complete those four pages. That's what you're being asked to do. We'll be looking at character defects later. Sir, please ask somebody to send me this workbook. Okay, could somebody send Nilesh the workbook, please? Are you on the WhatsApp group, Nilesh? Yes, I am in the WhatsApp group. Okay, because people, I see that uh, the workbook has been posted to the WhatsApp group. Uh, I have texted you a personal message also, sir. Okay. So what, what I mean by drop the call is you could just literally dis disconnect from the Zoom meeting. You won't, you, won't be, you won't be needing it for the next two hours. Obviously, people who come on the WhatsApp group late can't see further up the WhatsApp group. Uh, hi, I uh, joined an hour late. Uh, I've got the times mixed up. Uh, I can't message in the WhatsApp group and cannot seem to download the book. Okay. Alex, I think you've missed the boat. Okay. <laughs> uh, the best thing I can suggest that you do is that you listen to a recording of this workshop afterwards and and in and, and catch up in your own time uh, you could also listen to a recording of one of the previous workshops which was, which are available at this at the at the moment that's okay, another sure. possibility okay i'm sorry it's one of these things that the boat goes and you can't get on it after it's gone sure sure got, where would i find the old recordings okay um would uh, maybe Siddharth, if you were you were in one of the previous workshops, um, if you could, are you are you are you actually sorry, Alex? Are you on the WhatsApp group or not? Uh, yeah, I can't send any messages though, and it says only admins can send messages. I know you're on the wrong WhatsApp group. Oh, okay. Okay, I think you you're on you're on workshop in waiting. 
Um, oh, that's, yeah, I am actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, uh, would somebody very kindly uh, contact Alex through the WhatsApp in waiting, the, what, the, the workshop in waiting group and, and send him the link to the proper, well, actually, Alex, it's probably best to stay where you are. Okay, I, I will send you a link to okay. the uh, to the recording for a previous workshop. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, ho hi, Nicholas. Um, uh, I'm Paul from New Zealand. I also joined. Uh, I joined on the air, but just maybe a couple of minutes too late. Um, and I have been following through the whole workshop, but I'm also not in the Crepeps WhatsApp group on the WhatsApp and waiting group. Uh, okay. Paul. Garlic. I don't know whether it's possible I could okay. be added to the WhatsApp group. Yeah, I'm going to put the uh, link to the WhatsApp group, to this WhatsApp group for this workshop. I'm going to put it into the chat uh, on the... Uh, oh, I haven't got chat. I have got chat. Okay. Um, hmm. I've just I've disabled the chat for myself as well. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, now I've just put the link to today's workshop into the workshop in waiting uh, group. So Alex will be able to pick that up. Uh, oh, thanks. Paul, thanks are you there too? Busy. Yes, you, yeah. I, I, I just saw it popped up on my screen. So I'll go there now and open that link. Thank you very much, Tara. Okay, very good. Thank you. Hi, Nicholas. Uh, this is Girish. I Hi. have put a question on the WhatsApp group. Uh, basically, my question is, why is it important to do the zero to five? Because you said that even if you don't remember, uh, make it a bit so the question is, why is it so important to do the zero to five? Okay, Giresh, why questions are management questions? Okay, yeah, and we're not we're not in management. Okay, so just follow the assignment, please. Okay, all right, Thank you. great. Okay, we have three minutes to the end of the question time. Two minutes. Any further questions, please? So the Zoom meeting will be unmanned for the next two hours. Um, I'll keep the uh, I'll keep the room open. But um, hi, Nicholas. Uh, this is Paul from India. Can I hi. share something? Uh, no, not if, unless it's about step four. Oh, yeah, I just want to ask a question, sorry. Uh, Fine. Yeah, Go ahead. You, uh, we have to uh, write in the third column, we have to write only the feelings, all these uh, feelings from all the given, like uh, anger, sadness, fear, guilt, pain, shame, numb, excitement. Other than that, if we have some other feelings, can we write those also? No. Or only these feelings? Only those feelings. That's what we're looking for. Now, you'll find that any other what you might call a feeling can probably be broken down into these. So like something like you might say, well, loneliness is a feeling. Now, later on, we'll yeah. see that lo loneliness is a defect. It's not a feeling. OK, so but it consists of combination of sadness and fear, possibly anger as well. OK, yeah. so you can you can break other feelings down into these these are basic bodily emotions okay there are things that we can experience in our body as opposed to something going on up here like self-pity or depression mm -hmm. or loneliness mm -hmm. okay so i don't need to write those things right you don't need to write those things just use the feeling words only the feeling words on the on the template okay thank thank you so much all right Any more? Okay. 
So I'll see you now in uh, two hours time. Thank you very much. Much as possible in silence, work away in quietly to get your 40 instants written, 10 per page. Okay, see you later. In fact, I will say, I will, I will, I will sign off with a prayer. <clears throat> Let's go with the um, fourth step prayer. To God, it is I who has made my life a mess. This is on page 23. To God is I who has made my life a mess. I've done it, but I cannot undo it. My mistakes are mine, and I will begin a searching and fearless moral inventory. I will write down my wrongs, but I will also include that which is good. and pray for the strength to complete the task. See you later. All right, welcome back everyone. Please turn to page 23 and we'll begin with some prayers. Page 23 in your workbooks, first step prayer. Higher power, I admit that I'm powerless over my addiction. I admit that my life is unmanageable when I try to control it. Help me this day to understand the true meaning of powerlessness Remove from me all denial of my addiction. Second step to prayer. Without help, it is too much for me. But there is one who has all power. That one is God. May I find God now. Half measures avail me nothing. I stand at the turning point. 
I ask God's protection and care with complete abandon. And again, please um, try and say these prayers along with me out loud if you're able to. Third step, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Fourth step. Dear God, it is I who has made my mess. Uh, it, is my, it is I who has made my life a mess. I have done it, but I cannot undo it. My mistakes are mine, and I will begin a searching and fearless moral inventory. I will write down my wrongs, but I will also include that which is good. I pray for the strength to complete the task. Fifth step. God, my inventory has shown me who I am. I now ask for your help in admitting my wrongs to another person and to you. Assure me and be with me in this step. Without this step, I cannot progress in my recovery. With your help, I can do this and I do it. Great. So please um, turn to page three to check our current progress. Uh, you should all have, or those of you who answered yes, to the step questions one and two, and then went on to say the third step prayer should have uh, today's date against steps one, two, and three. And we're still now on with the fourth step inventory. We haven't completed it, but we have begun it. Uh, let's now turn to... Um, well, let's look, just look at step five, first of all. What are we going to admit? To God, to ourselves, and to another human being, we're going to admit the exact nature of our wrongs. So if you turn to page 11 now, page 11 in your workbook, when these pages 11, 12, and 13 have been completed, you will be in a position to admit it to God, and to another human being, the exact nature of your wrongs. Okay, so um, we talked about selfishness, self-centeredness. This, we think, is the root of our troubles, driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity. We step on the toes of our fellows and they retaliate. Sometimes they hurt us seemingly without provocation, but we invariably find that at some time in the past, we have made decisions based on self, which later placed us in a position to be hurt. So this is where we're going to write down the hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity. Um, so let's just, let's just begin. Um, uh, um, let's begin by writing on the top of page 11 under defects let's just let's just write selfishness okay at the top of the page selfishness okay now just to make the point that we're going to fill three pages let's put self-centeredness at the bottom of the third page. So we've got selfishness at the top and self-centeredness at the bottom. And we're going to now fill three pages with other defects. Okay. So selfishness and self-centeredness are dysfunctional attitudes. Let's think about some other dysfunctional attitudes that we might want to put onto our list. Well, there's a nice little checklist on page 21. I'd like to just turn to page 21. You'll see there a nice little checklist of some favorite dysfunctional attitudes. Okay. Resentment, selfishness, dishonesty, pride, lust, greed, envy, gluttony, anger, laziness. Okay. Now, um, 
leave out fear and anger, but you could trans transfer the others as soon as you like. You can put them onto your defect list. Unless, of course, you've never, ever in your whole life, ever once for a moment had that attitude. If you have had it, even just for a moment or just once, it needs to go on your list. Okay. So these are dysfunctional attitudes. But there's more. And there's also different types of defects that need to go onto your list. So let's think next about dysfunctional actions. So these are things that we, where we do something that is dysfunctional. So let's put lying. Now, if you've never told a lie, obviously you don't need to put this on your defect list, but if you have told a lie even just once, it needs to go on your defect list, lying. And stealing. Well, if I've stolen anything, even just once, on the list, stealing. Uh, gossiping. Now, you might say, well, is gossiping really a defect? Okay, so how do we determine whether something's a defect or not? So let's turn to page 20. Page 20. At the bottom of page 20 here, you'll see the test for God's will. Test for God's will. Okay. Now, God's will is always four things. And it needs to be all four things of these things to qualify for God's will. It is always unselfish and honest and pure and loving. Four things. And it needs to be all four. Okay. And God's will is never self-seeking or dishonest or impure or fear-driven. And it only needs to be one to fail. So, Let's take the defect. Well, we'll take gossiping. Is this a defect? Well, is gossiping honest and unselfish and pure and loving? Or is it self-seeking or dishonest or impure or fear-driven? What do you think? If you think it's a defect and you do it and you've ever done it, put it on your list. This is how you can test. So let's do, let's do another test. Using internet pornography. Is this honest, unselfish, pure, and loving? Or is it self-seeking, dishonest, impure, and fear-driven? You decide. If you've done it, and you think it's a defect, it needs to go on your defect list. And you can say the same for every other sexual behavior that you've ever engaged in. Masturbation, adultery, promiscuity, sodomy, voyeurism, exhibitionism, anything else. Do the test. Do it pass the test. If it fails the test for God's will, put it on your defect list. Okay. You won't, be, you won't go wrong if you put it on your defect list. So now you can see why we're going to end up with a hun over 100 defects. Because every single dysfunctional action that you've ever taken, raging, violence, yelling, using foul language, these are all defects that need to go on your defect list. Okay. So we've got dysfunctional attitudes like self-pity and resentment, dysfunctional actions like lying and stealing, and we've got dysfunctional beliefs like thinking I'm unlovable, thinking that God doesn't exist or believing, uh, no, believing that God doesn't exist, believing that God won't help me, believing God doesn't care, believing that I am hopeless and helpless, believing that I cannot get sober. There are lots of dysfunctional beliefs that we carry around with us. You want to say like low self-esteem, I suppose is a dysfunctional attitude, but it also, in some, in some sense, is a dysfunctional belief. I don't believe I am worthwhile. I don't believe I am a, can amount to anything. I don't believe I can ever be 
honest, unselfish, pure and loving. I don't think I can ever be close to God. I think I'm always going to be working for the opposition. Okay. So we've got dysfunctional uh, actions, attitudes and beliefs. Now, the fourth category are addictions and compulsions. So I want you to write on your defect list all of your addictions and compulsions. Every one, your primary addiction, your secondary addiction, your tertiary addiction. And if you haven't got a secondary addiction, you're in denial, let me assure you. So you might as well write denial on your defect list as well. And while we're at it, some of the other things that addicts get up to in their heads are denial, intellectualization, rationalization, minimization, justification, these all need to go on the defect list too. If you've ever done any of that, put it on the defect list. Okay, so you've got your primary and secondary addiction, be it um, alcoholism, substance abuse, compulsive gambling, compulsive eating, anorexia, bulimia, um, debting, compulsive spending, compulsive cluttering, compulsive under-earning, you name it, if it's, it should be on there. Smoking, any of you nicotine addicts, nicotine addiction needs to go on there. Um, a, a, addiction to uh, recreational drugs or substances of any kind. Sugar, maybe addiction to sugar could go down on that too. So we've got uh, actions, attitudes, beliefs, and addictions. Now the last category you can add are any mental, emotional, or physical illnesses that you suffer from. Because these may prevent you from being of maximum use to God and your fellows. So let's put them on the list because we're going to ask God to remove all this stuff. So we might as well put down, make it a big ask and put down stuff that could also be standing in the way of our usefulness to God and our fellows. So mental illnesses, emotional illnesses, post-traumatic stress disorder, a common diagnosis of all addicts, attention deficit disorder, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever you might have suffered from or be suffering from, put it on the list because it's better that it's on the list and we ask God to remove it, then we leave it out. So now I hope you can understand why we're going to be looking at a long list of defects. I would like you all to end up with at least 100 defects of character. I personally have over 200. The record, the fellowship record is 400. Now, in my book, that person is a saint because they have recognized that they have 400 defects of character and they've humbly asked God to remove them. A saint is not someone with no defects. A saint is someone who has realized they've got a lot of defects and humbly asked God to remove them. And then instead of wasting their time trying to work on their defects, which is a complete and utter waste of time, they spent their time working on their assets. So the other column, are the, the, the right-hand column, page, page 11 and 12 and 13, is for you to write the countervailing virtue for each defect. So for each defect, there's something better that God has for us. Okay, so instead of dishonesty, honesty. Instead of resentment, forgiveness instead of lying truth telling instead of breaking promises keeping promises instead of cowardice courage okay this is how we need to go in and fill out the asset column by looking at the defect and saying what's the opposite to that what is the countervailing virtue what is the thing that god has for me instead of that defect and I need to fill that in. Now, 
when you have finished the next part of this workshop, this process, you shall have a complete list of your defects, a complete list of assets, matching assets. You only need to enter a defect once, and you only need to enter an asset once. The opposite of all fears, and I would expect you to be listing at least 20 different fears, is trust in God. So <clears throat> I'm going to put a little aid memoir into the WhatsApp group with a, a, a sort of a, a, um, a list of fears, just so that you can go down and you just, you know, you can just borrow those that you're blended identify with. Because here at the defect list level, we're talking not just fear generically, we're talking about fear of something, fear of authority figures, fear of catching the coronavirus, fear of dying of pneumonia, fear of going to hell, fear of angry women, fear of angry men, fear of economic insecurity, fear of, fear of, fear of. So that you, you know, I would expect each of us to have somewhere in the region of 20, 20 or so different fears that we, we, that we can really identify with. Okay. So, So what do we do next? We're going to now, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, that's probably enough to say just for the moment. Let's see what we've got from the big book here. Um, so number 41, number 41, uh, these, <clears throat> These quotations from the big book, by the way, and the reference numbers, numbers are, um, they're all in the folder, uh, which you would find if you read the information in the group info um, on the WhatsApp group. So if you haven't read the information in the group info, I suggest you read that. Uh, it'll explain an awful lot about what's going on and, and you will also be able to find the document where um, these uh, references come from. So, this is the description of the fifth, the, the fifth step. We pocket our pride and go to it, illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny of the past. That's what we're going to end up doing. And then we hear the wonderful promises of the fifth step. So there's eight brilliant, amazing promises of the fifth step. Once we have taken this step with holding nothing, we are delighted. We can look the world in the eye. We can be alone at perfect peace and ease. Our fears fall from us. We begin to feel the nearness of our creator. We may have had certain spiritual beliefs, but now we begin to have a spiritual experience. The feeling that the drink, drugs, acting out problem has disappeared will often come strongly. We fear we are on the broad highway, walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. That's what's on offer. That's something that's on offer for you today, if you complete your fifth step today. Uh, in actual fact, you will have from now until the next workshop on steps six and six to 12. Uh, to complete this fifth step with your, with your partner. But I recommend that you do it as soon as possible, like immediately after I finish giving you the instructions. Okay, so the two of you get together and I'll explain how that's done and share your fourth step inventories and do that as soon as possible. Uh, so don't, don't leave it, but you have in fact, until uh, there, are, there are two workshops, there's one tomorrow, and on the next day, the workshop tomorrow is at 10 a.m. London time. That's London local time. I'm not talking GMT. I'm talking London local time, 10 a.m., uh, which I believe is 2.30 uh, p.m. India time. Okay. Uh, that's the workshop tomorrow. And then there is another opportunity for the same workshop, steps six to 12, the following day on Sunday. And that starts at 9.30 Indian time, uh, 5 a.m. London time, 5 a.m. London time. 
9.30 India time. Okay, now, um, so I'm now going to give you the instructions on um, how to do your fourth and fifth steps. And I'm still, basically, it's still, we still haven't completed at this point, we haven't really completed our fourth step. But this is an amazing thing because it's a way that we're going to do the fourth and the fifth step at the same time. And you'll see how this is done. Now we're going to put this instruction up on the, um, on the WhatsApp group, but I don't want you to do anything yet. I just want you to listen very carefully to these instructions. Please do not begin number one until I've talked you through it. Okay. So you use the WhatsApp group to find a qualified step five partner for yourself. Okay. Men with men, women with women, ideally people from the same country with other people from their own country. If you are a native, and if you're not a native English speaker, if your native language is another language, try and partner with somebody who is not, uh, who, is, who has the same uh, native language as yourself. Okay. And, and having found that partner, uh, you then, the two of you drop off the call and you make direct contact with each other. Obviously, you've got each other's contacts via WhatsApp, so you can now contact each other by WhatsApp or by whatever other means suits you, okay? Now, what you're then going to do is that one of you is you're going to read your fourth step inventory to the other person. In practice, it's best if you just read the first quarter of your inventory and then you listen to the first quarter of the, your partner's inventory and then you swap back. You, you, you share the second quarter, they share the second quarter, you share the third quarter, uh, they share the third quarter, and then the fourth. And so you're going backwards and forwards like that. So it sort of prevents any monotony setting in, keeps us sort of fresh. Okay. And you also, having read your inventory, you'll listen to your partner's inventory as well. And your job is to spot and re write down your partner's defects of character. Okay. I'm going to say more about this in a minute. Once you've done that, you exchange your defects lists with your partner. So you, you send your partner, take a photograph of it or whatever, you send your, the defect list that you've written for your partner, his defects or her defects that you've written down, you send it to him or her. You swap defect lists at that point. Now, then you've got your list of defects that you've begun writing in your workbook. And now your partner has sent you a nice, long, juicy list of new defects. And you can add them into your list so that you produce a really comprehensive list of defects. Once you've done that, then you've got to make sure you complete all the assets so that by the time the next workshop starts, the step six to 12 workshop starts, you've got all three pages, 11, 12, and 13, stuffed full of juicy defects and assets. If you don't have this form, three pages filled in, then you're not really in a position to be able to do the next workshop. If I can make that, I'm making that clear. You need those three pages full, defects and assets, in order to come along to the next workshop, to do step six, which will be to surrender, to become willing to surrender those defects and then surrender them in step seven. Okay, now I've got some, uh, some more detailed um, instructions for sharing your inventory. When you're sharing your four-step inventory, only sh read what you've written. Do not elaborate. We don't have time to listen to your life story. We don't, this is why it's so important when you write this fourth step that you write a concise statement that you can read. You don't write a note that you can then elaborate on. 
because you will run out of time. Okay, so just read what you've written to your partner. That's it. Pause between incidents so your partner can write down several defects per incident. That's their job. Their job is to spot in this incident what the defects were and write them down. So you need to give them time to do that. So proceed when they tell you to. So let them tell you when to, to read the next instant. Let them control the timing. All right. So there we go. That's uh, instructions for sharing. And now some further detailed instructions for when you're listening. Okay. So you're listening to your partner's inventory. Listen very carefully and note down your partner's defects of character as you spot them. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of practice in this. Okay. You need to get good at this. Now I know most of us are pretty good at spotting other people's defects. But this, on this occasion, you have permission. Not only do you have permission, but it's your job to spot people's, the other person's defects and to write them down. Don't miss anything out, out of being trying to be nice. Okay? If you think anal intercourse is a defect, write it down. Okay? If your partner disagrees, they can always cross it off afterwards. Be honest. Okay, so number two, be critical. If in doubt, assume a defect is present in this, in this event, whatever this incident is. If, assume there's a defect in there somewhere and write it down. Okay, so and aim to list several defects per incident. That's how they've got 40 incidents. Okay, you need like three or four inc defects per incident or give them over 100 defects, okay? See how that works, right. Then you say, when you've written your defects down, you say next to your partner, which is their, their cue to tell you the next incident, okay? And when you've completed the list of defects, send it to your partner. Now, keep a copy yourself because here's the interesting thing. If you spot it, you've got it which means that anything you've spotted on your, uh, and put on your partner's list, you should very carefully consider whether it ought to be on yours as well. Okay, so having done that, the two of you can drop off the call to each other and just get your full list prepared. Remember, you need to mention one, instant, one defect once, your full list of assets, and you need to mention one asset once. And the opposite of all fears is trust in God. So you only need to mention that once. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the task. Now, how much time do you have for this? Well, officially, you've got two hours to do it. It's take about an hour to read your inventory to your partner and for them to write your defects down and, and then an hour for, for the other partner. So about two hours should be enough. But you can schedule that with your partner to suit yourself whenever you want. So if you, if you, you know, if maybe one of you hasn't actually really quite finished the fourth step and needs half an hour more to finish, that's fine. You can arrange it between your, between the two of you. You know, are you ready to go ahead now? Do you want a bit more time? Should we schedule this for later in the day? The important thing is that by 10 a.m. London time tomorrow, or 5 a.m. London time on Sunday you've got it ready to go. Three pages, juicy defects and assets, ready to go. Okay, now I'm now going to exercise you in spotting defects. I, I, I read to you earlier an event from my own life when I was two years old, okay? I'm going to tell you it again, and I want you to spot my defects. I want you to see if you, each of you can spot three defects but just post them one at a time up into the whatsapp group as you as you think of them just post them into the whatsapp group okay so my mother i hurt my finger and cried she came into the room and hit me feelings anger sadness fear shame pain guilt numb what defects of character would you expect 
someone who had that experience, that traumatic experience as a child, to have developed in life. Okay. Self-doubt. There we go. First one, self-doubt. I'd be doubting myself, aren't I? Maybe I'm going to be doubting more than myself. Okay, come on. I want to see them all. Here we go. Fear of my mother. Okay, self-pity. It's okay. Uh, depression. Distrust. Raging. Doubting others. Resentment. A feeling of generalized anxiety. Unsafety. Okay. Fear of violence. Isolating. Great. Keep them coming. Fear of angry women. Exactly. One of my biggest, probably one of my master defects is fear of angry women. Okay. So in relationships, I'm all about trying to make sure this woman's not angry. Why? Because I'm terrified of angry women for something that happened to me when I was two years old. So, you know, she suddenly explodes like Mount Vesuvius and I'm in the fetal position, completely incapable. And yet I can be a soldier and face the enemy on the battlefield. But if it's an angry woman, I'm, I'm done for. Perfectionism, codependency, fear of punishment. Now, shame, there's, there is a healthy form of shame. Shame is something that's there to tell me that I'm not God. Guilt, there's a healthy form of guilt to tell me I've done something wrong. But there's toxic shame, which is where I feel ashamed for something that isn't, you know, isn't anything to do with me. And there's toxic guilt. So I would be, rather than put shame as a defect, I would put toxic shame, toxic guilt. Okay, depression, good. Self-seeking, yeah. Cutting communications, yep, great. Isolating, okay, right. Um, hurt is not, is not itself a defect, but they might say uh, avoidance of, um, of, of, of painful situations. I could be avoidant, just, you know, I, I'm hiding, another thing. Uh, raging, um, Grandiosity is another one. So self, low self-esteem, you know, can can go can go both ways. You know, the often with uh, with the, the defects can be there can be defects on either side. Uh, uh, the virtue sometimes is in the middle. So it's like the, it could be you know on the one hand I can be grandiose. On the other side I can be like self um, self um, punishing or self-hatred, self-hatred on one side and grandiosity on the other. The virtue is somewhere in the middle, which is like um, being realistic, having a sensible self, 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 sense of myself. Okay. All right. So I, I think you're getting the point now. Okay. All of these um, are possible developments from that one incident but you hopefully you will have about 40 incidents to go at and so it'll give you lots of opportunities to write defects uh, your partner's defects as you spot them as you see them coming and um, and to, your job is to give your partner the longest possible list of defects that's that's the prize okay the more the better. He can always, or she can always cross them off if it doesn't agree. All right, so now I think I've now given you all you need in order to begin pairing. So what I suggest for pairing, what you should do is just put into the WhatsApp group something like uh, man, uh, India, Hindi, something like that. Just just your, your, your sex, your, uh, your country, and your native language, okay? And that will give people enough then to be able to pair up and then start pairing up with each other on the WhatsApp group, okay? 
Uh, so the, be the, the tip now is to do this quickly, okay? Grab the first person who looks suitable and just do, uh, and pair up with him. Uh, uh, Siddharth, I'd like you to hold back in case we, are, we have an odd number. Um, and in the meantime, away you go. Oh, okay. By the way, anybody on this workshop, you can assume, speaks good English. Um, so I shouldn't worry too much about if they're from a different country. But obviously, it's easiest if you can pair with somebody in your own country because then you've got more options for communication, phone and so on. All right, so if, you've, if you're struggling to find a partner, then repost again, just keep posting again until, you know, until somebody says yes. Trust, trust God that he will put you in touch with the right partner. Okay, don't try to overthink this. Just find someone to work with. Okay, so while that is going on in the background, um, as soon as you have a partner and you think you can understand the instructions, you can just drop off the call and just get on working one-to-one. -one. Uh, if anybody has any questions that they want to ask, um, they can now do so on the Zoom meeting. Uh, Nicholas, hi, this is Siddharth. Hi, Sid. I, I have a question. So... Uh, is, is it about this fourth step, or the fifth step? Is it about the uh, it's, assignment? It's the fifth. Yeah, yeah, it's about the fifth step. Yeah. So I was taking my inventory and uh, I was uh, you know, focusing on mental, emotional, and physical illnesses, uh, but I wasn't able to come up with any assets. So, for example, if, if I have paranoia, or PTSD or schizophrenia or ADD. So what yeah. would be the equivalent asset Good mental for that, health. if you could? Uh, Good mental health. Few. Yeah. That's it. Good mental health. Good mental, physical, and emotional health. Covers the whole lot. Yeah. Great. Hey Nicholas, I have a question. Hello, Mike. Go ahead. Um, I um, on the fourth, uh, just the inventory part. I didn't put as many, I guess, sexual experiences as maybe I probably should have. Do I need to? Would it be better to include more of like those experiences? I have like some of the major ones, but there's so many. It's like I, you know, how much should I put on or not? No, no. The fourth step is not a sexual inventory. That okay. would be, that'd be a first step inventory. This is a general whole life inventory. You probably okay, got gotcha. find it. as long as you've got a few sexual instances on there, it'd probably be enough for your partner to write a few defects down. But for yourself, I mean, if you've done if you've done any first step work on uh, on, on 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 sexual behaviours, you should have all your gotcha. the sexual behaviours you no longer wish to have. They should all be on your defect list. You know, item by item. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay. And and the, and, the, and the opposite, obviously, of of uh, of all sexual uh, act, uh, defects would be uh, purity or sexual sobriety, um, chastity, another another word that's sometimes used. Um, but it could also in, include things like um, 
uh, uh, faithfulness, um, modesty. With the with the assets, uh, you can you can actually anything that you want more of, you can add onto your asset list. You can add to the asset list to your heart's content. You want more courage, you want more courtesy, more love, more generosity, more you know you just you can just add it. More faithfulness, more diligence. You can just add anything you like to the asset list. Yeah, okay. Hi Nicholas, this is Rohit here. Yeah. Yep, go ahead, Rohit. Uh, well, uh, I've been a silent observer in this workshop because I wasn't able to get connected due to some connectivity issue over here. Okay. So I believe uh, if a uh, recording will be posted in the uh, WhatsApp group uh, regarding the entire workshop. Okay, so if I go through the recording uh, by the evening, can I join in tomorrow and catch up with you guys? Yes, you can. You will. You will need to find a... Uh, a fifth step partner, uh, maybe okay. some someone else on this WhatsApp group who's actually had the experience, got a bit of experience with spotting defects, could be could be a part, possible partner for you. As long as, as long as they, the person you do this fifth step with, understands what their job is, that it's not mm -hmm. just to listen. Their job is actually actively to spot your defects. So okay. get, get someone who who you think will be paying attention and be very critical. Okay. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Right. Hi. Hello. Hi, Nicholas. Sorry, what happens if you can't find a partner? Okay, so uh, Dolores, you've been unable to, so far to find a partner. Um, yeah. Just want to be to find out whether there are any females left on the call who do not have a partner. Please, Dolores is still looking for a partner. Um, if nobody turns up, Dolores, what I can do is I can send you the contact details of two or three women in Ireland who have done this process, who would probably be willing to listen to your fifth step and to uh, write your defects down for you. Okay, I know a lady that did it yesterday. Great, um, great. It, great. Yeah, will I ask it. her? Okay. Please. Okay, Absolutely. Okay. thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Ideal. Okay. Many thanks Cheers. to Lawrence. Thank you. Okay, so I've just posted the uh, aid memoir of fears Please look at that. If there's any fear there that you identify with, it needs to go onto your defect list. And remember, the opposite to all fears is trust in God, or you could say courage or fortitude. You only need to enter that once. And I've also now posted the defects and assets lookup. Now this is this is meant so that you, if you have a defect and you don't know what the asset is, you can look it up. But of course, you've also got here a nice long list of defects, which may help you if you are running short, if you haven't made the hundred mark. Okay, so I think I'm going to, at this point, I'm probably going to close the Zoom meeting. Uh, the question in step four. Okay, so.
Any final questions, please? If you're not able to find a partner in the workshop, then you can ask somebody else to be your, to, to, to listen to your fifth step, which should obviously be quicker, but ideally find someone who has done this process and understands what's involved. Okay, so I'm now going to drop off this call. I'm going to close the meeting. And the next time I will be back on will be at um, 10 a.m. London time tomorrow, Saturday, for a step six to 12 workshop. I hope to see many of you there. Until then, au revoir. <laughs>